Okay, just to extend a warm welcome again to those of you who have joined us tonight. Um, this evening's workshop is all about how to revise for success with IPACA assessments. And um, please do ask questions as we go along. Um, that's what we're here for this evening to kind of myth bust and sort of inform where we're, where we're moving forward to. Hopefully, when you came in, you would have got a copy of uh, the two documents in the front here. Um, the first is the Year 7 to Year 10 Assessment Guide. Um, and that's, that has been produced specifically for this next set of assessments that are coming up. And I'll have a talk with you in a moment about what's contained in here and the reason why we're producing this. Um, in addition to that, um, there's a copy for students in Year 7 and Year 8 of our curriculum guides. And when we're now using a term of the students called knowledge organisers, and that's essentially um, contained in this document, um, is the majority of subjects we have here, and it basically says these are the key things that you need to learn in this half term to do the work. Um, and you'll see that there's a synergy between the knowledge organisers and the assessment guide, um, and I'll explain that a little bit more in a moment. Um, but like I said, if you've got any questions as we go along, please ask. Um, in terms of what's coming up, um, our next assessment week is um, starting on Monday, uh, the 30th of January. Um, it will run throughout the week. And inside the assessment booklet here, um, we've got a breakdown of the assessment timetable. Um, the assessment timetable shows that when students will have specific sessions of revision, um, which will happen in the lesson normally, generally speaking, in the lesson before the exam, they will have dedicated revision time, and that will be time that will be directed by the teacher using key revision materials and um, will ultimately build towards their exam. Um, you'll see in the book that there's a colour-coded system here um, to separate the, the different sessions from Year 7, Year 8, Year 9, and Year 10. Um, for Year 11, parents have a separate information because they're not having an assessment week on the 30th of the 1st. Their next mock starts on the 27th of February, um, and there will be separate information from Mrs Pierce about those weeks. What we wanted to do in our assessment guide is really take out the mystery of what happened assessment week for you as parents and for the children as, uh, as the student. Um, we want to make it really explicit what we're looking for in the examinations in order to provide every child with the, the maximum opportunity for success. So inside of this assessment guide, as well as having um, a kind of checklist of things that can happen with revision, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that tonight, we've also got uh, a breakdown of each year group and the knowledge and the elements of assessment that them will be used. So if we just look in the book here, if we look at page 8 onwards, you'll see that in year 7 and year, uh, we've got the assessment manifestos or the assessment manifests for English, Maths and Science. And it's a new approach that we've been working with across the academy. Initially, we're launching it in English, Maths and Science in year 7 to year 10. But moving forward, it's something that we're going to grow and use throughout our different subjects. So, um, said to Joanne earlier that um, the next stage of this is introducing this to our EVAC subjects, that's history, geography, computer science, French and Spanish, and then we'll look at how we roll that out to our creative subjects and online technology subjects as well. But if we just look at the English manifest here on page 8, you'll see that the head of English, Ms. Lovegrove, has set out very clearly here what will be happening in the exam. So if we go back to the exam timetable, year 7, and um, we're in yellow, Year 7 English, so if your child's in Year 7, they will be having a revision lesson on Tuesday the 31st of January, and then they will be having their English exam on Thursday the 2nd of February. And that English exam will be a, an exam which looks at reading, analysing, and interpreting poetry. And you're building on the work here, so if you're able to support the revision at home, there's links here into the key things that you need to think about, there's information for you about the paper and the question format, and also the poems that will be studied. We've also got a link to support revision if you want to look at that at home. So you've got every opportunity to make sure that your child, and obviously your child's got every opportunity to go on and have a look and be successful in those exams. Equally, equally in maths, we've got the we've got the breakdown of the different subjects. Um, that's actually the order that they come in the paper. I didn't put that down, but that's you know good secret information that you've got here tonight. But, uh, and that's the topics that come up as they come. Um, we want to take the mystery out of assessment because we want every child to provide, to be given the opportunity to be successful. 
we recognise that success is not all about what we see at the top here, because we know that people see often see success and wonder how did we get there. And the truth is, people are successful because of their hard work, their discipline, their dedication, their absolute persistence to be the best that they can be. And we see our role moving forward is it's about building the scaffolds in which to enable that to happen. And these resources, they're, yes, they're new tonight and they're new for this assessment week, but moving forward, they're the resources we're going to have in every assessment week as parents, and um, you will be having them in advance of the week before. So this is a new thing that we're launching here, but in terms of moving forward, it's something we've got to build and develop. And actually, the plan for the next half term is to have separate worksheets for year seven, year eight, year nine, year ten, with more information about the individual subjects in. Uh, but this is very much a starting point this evening, and these three subjects, English, Maths, and Science, are the starting point. So if you type in those, um, if we go back to those assessment manifests for maths, if you type in median or the numbers, you'll get a video that comes up and talks about. One thing we've looked at as a team to develop further for the next set that we need to do as parents is to put in brackets the hey, you maths video number so that there's a direct link there to the next teaching. So that's something that we want to develop and move forward with. Um, in the in this guide here, the key things for curriculum guide. Um, I briefly said at the beginning of the session here when I gave these out, these, these, these are what we call knowledge organisers. In future, at the beginning of each half term, you will be presented with, the, your child will be presented with one of these. A copy will go on the website. I will send an email out to you as parents with, with a copy attached. It will probably text you as well. I'll try and hit you from every direction to, to let you know that these are coming home. So these will come home in the first week of a half term, ideally the first day. Because they, these are all the learning that's happening for that half term, um, cut in, in the format of a one page summary from each subject. Um, we, we use the term knowledge organising because it's organising a lot of information into a short space as a, as a quick reference point. Um, and this, if we look at, say, for example, the science one in here, which I think Science one on page 10 and 11, you'll see that the science knowledge organisers link directly to the assessment manifest. So you can see the link between the two. Now, now we're giving you these this week because it's something that we're trying to start and get the next running, um, and you're only having it a week before assessment week. But in future, you're going to have this information six weeks before they take the assessment. So they're going to have this and they're going to make reference to it. We're also going to be using these in the classroom. Um, and the students will be their lessons will be built around the knowledge organisers, and we're also going to make reference to them in our homework diary, uh, in our homework calendar as well, which will be to look at some of some of the students' homework will be to, to revise from the knowledge organisers, because this is this is this is this is the uh, nuts and bolts really of what they need to be successful in their subject. Um, so again, this at the moment is a year seven and eight example, and um, it contains most subjects, not every subject. Here at the moment. Next half term, we'll have every subject, and there'll be a separate one for year seven, there'll be a separate one for year eight, year nine, year ten, year eleven. So we can really tell you right at the beginning of the half term this is what's coming up, this is what your child will be learning. Um, and obviously, the assessment will then link directly back to that. And um, were there any questions about the knowledge organisers or the assessment manifests? Okay, fantastic. This evening, <coughs> I just wanted to go through really. Um, some of the opportunities that we have by using the documents such as the assessment manifesto and the knowledge organisers and talk about how we can support um, our children's journey with revision. Um, there was a question earlier on about is there a concern about doing too much assessment, about um, a fear or an anxiety that may be attached to that. And I think really where we are as an education system uh, in this country and in terms of government's priorities and our nation's priorities, we know that in order to be, to be deemed successful at school, our students have to be successful in their primary examinations. We've moved increasingly away from coursework, we've moved to increasingly knowledge-based curriculums, and therefore we need to build the resilience. If we go back to, you know, if we go back to this diagram up here, we need to build in that discipline, that hard work, and, you know, failure 
that, that's the reality that if, if you don't develop it, you don't put the work in. You know, so some of our children need to learn that lesson, and I can assure you, it's certainly better to learn that failure in your market cameras in your half family setting rather than at the, in the summer of your year 11 when you come out on that envelope. Because we want, when we get to that summer of year 11, to make sure that every single one of our learners is in the prime position to be in an examination, in an examination situation, and being prepared and ready to be successful in that. And that's all about the practice. You, know, you wouldn't expect an Olympic athlete to arrive at the stadium having not done the practice when it starts and all of those things are being put through their paces. And that's what, for us, that, that, that stage assessment will start. And we do build it up gradually. You know, we do tend to do shorter tests in peak stage three, normally in the classroom environment. Um, and as we build up through peak stage four, increasingly they will go into examination conditions in the sense of working in the same room that they're actually going to take their final examination for year 11 mocks, for example, happen in the same environment that they will ultimately set, set their assessments. Um, we also build in in terms of the support. So if your child needs a reader, or if your child needs a, a scribe, or additional time, that's something that we build into our assessments as well, so that we can practice those things. Because some of those things need practice in terms of relationship, or uh, in terms of the, what is the exact nature of the individual. So, the assessment weeks enables them to have that practice and also the organisation to have that practice to ensure that we provide the ultimate experience for them. So, you know, in terms of where do we start with revision? Where do we start with planning for success and building the right habits? And the first thing definitely has to be about getting organised. Getting organised, and that comes from getting organised with what you need to learn, how to be successful, and getting organised in terms of where's the best place and the best time for me to ensure that I make the maximum effort and move things forward. And we know that for our children now, a lot of that is about minimising distraction, finding a quiet space, making it tidy. That was always my fact. About the only time when I, was, I remember back when I was doing my university, the only time in my room that was tidy was when I was sent a letter of advice. You know, I spent the whole time you know, tidying my teenage bedroom because just to avoid that that revision. Turn off your tech. Rethink about how you drink. Make sure that you keep hydrated. And it's something that we put in the assessment guide here: the importance of the healthy. You know, we put the reference here to the blueberries. I tried to get a quote about blueberries. I think the majority of them are quite suspect in terms of their actual superpowers. But um, you know. You've only got to type in blue blue superfood and read what comes up for Google. I have very interested in eating last night yesterday, <laughs> looking at that sort of thing. But um, you know, really important to keep your keep body hydrated, keep, keep yourself in a good place, because no, it's no good you know, forcing something to happen. It's got to be natural, it's got to be timed. It's also about building routine, and the more that that, that, that routine can be built on when they're younger, the more they're going to be successful when they move through. You know, the importance of correcting a revision timetable. Yeah, really critical for us, that first sentence there. And check when you need to revise. It's no good revising, you know, getting just going off random and picking out different things. And that's where the assessment manifests come into their own. Because we're saying here exactly what you need to revise. And we recognise in the past with the assessment weeks, that would have been that would have caused anxiety for learners, but actually we've not been explicit with them. We've asked teachers to say, This is what's coming up in next week's test. But we've kind of taken that emphasis away now to make sure that you've got documentation that says this is exactly what's coming up, this is exactly the areas of study, and how can we make sure that we're successful in that. And obviously moving forward in terms of GCSE programs of study, there's the exam specifications, and you know we will always provide this of what, what needs to come right. I'm going to go through a few strategies on how we can revise. I'm going to watch a uh, video in a moment. What I would say is find a way that's best for your child. You know, maybe you firing quick quiz questions at them. It may be that they do prefer just to really consume a lot of information, make their own visual notes. That was something that always helped me. I always needed to get away from my house to revise, and I actually did eventually get successful with the revision. Um, I need to be away from just the people around me. Um, you know, make it make it fun, make it active, make it a dialogue between and ultimately. You know, if you're holding this, it's not an organiser, you've got a great thing to quiz, you know, your son or daughter, and you've only got to pick out one of these pages here, you know, we can go back to the science one, and you can see that, 
massive. How do I prepare a microscope slide? And all of a sudden, you're the expert because you've got the booklet. You know, and instantly, you know, the, the, the pressure's on them. And actually, put them into that situation where they've got to think and they've got to be on their feet. And ultimately, what we're seeking here is all of this to lead to the results that we want. Um, and we want our children to be successful. So let's look at some of the different ways that we can do that. Uh, some of the different strategies for revision. Um, obviously, one common way that people you know, do is, is um, create a revision timetable. Um, you know, as I listen to children in the room, there's, there's, a, there's a comedy, I don't know if you should be able to watch it or not, but there's a comedy fresh meat on Channel 4, and the student's there, and then Howard is here, he lives in his basement, and, he, and he's created an assessment timetable, he's made it in a dome. And everything around him is all of his revisions, and basically, the, 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 the subliminal message is that he spent more time building his revision time there when he had actually revising. And this, this, this is a danger of you know, the perfectionists in the world where you know, they actually spend all of that time. You know, importantly, get down, get started. And that's why on the back of the book, that's, you know, I, I said that the secret to getting ahead is getting started. You know, and actually making that first step, making that first commitment to be successful. Definitely prioritise subjects and topics you're struggling with. And in a moment, I'm going to talk about our question level analysis tools um, that will be coming home in the future for you as parents that will show you the exact areas of maths or the exact areas of science or the exact areas of English that your child is struggling with. Because we're talking about huge disciplines here. You know, disciplines that ultimately are going to get kids picking their knowledge from right across the curriculum and passing on. There was an interesting bit of analysis on last year's ECHT stat test. I'm sure we've had this probably quote these things. You know, in the year six paper for um, reading, for example, 35% of the content was actually from the year one and year two curriculum. And then another 20% came from the year three curriculum and another 15% from the year four. And actually, the percentage that was made from the year six national curriculum was about six, seven percent, wasn't it? The actual amount. And it shows that what we're looking for is everything that they've learned on their journey, not just what they've crammed in year 11 or crammed in year eight. And this is why our assessments that we do, and there's a good reference. Mass assessment manifesto, we're going to be in year eight, we're going to be testing your primary curriculum knowledge. Because it's all about building on what we already know and moving forward. So, our QLAs, our question level analysis, which I mentioned in a moment, will support in that. Break up the time that you spend revising. I think this is very unique to individuals. Some people do prefer to do much longer sessions, other do small five, ten minute blocks and move or um, a break in subject or a change. That's about finding a rhythm and, and something that works for you. I said a minute ago about the importance of water. Around 78% of the brain consists of water. Keep it hydrated. <coughs> One thing historically we've had a problem in the academy with is the energy drinks and the perception that those somehow keep give us you wings. Of, yeah, give you wings. You know, if you want to kind of think. And actually, you know, we, we, we touch on this as students that Caffeine won't help you get the wheel up. Yeah. It won't help you get all the time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that was right. I think it was four years ago. It's massive with the wheel up. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah, it's that on me too. Yeah, right. It's not, not good for your body. You're not going to And then obviously the importance of having a quiet space for yourself. And that's about finding the space that's right for you um, and right, uh, right for them. So, how can we present that information? There's lots of ways to do it, of course, and you know, each and every child will find their best way, but many like to condense the information to post notes or blank cards. I was planning to bring some cards on for you this evening, but I was going to get you to write some notes, but I, uh, I left my cards back in the office. But you know, that notion of condensing the information, focusing on the key points, take the knowledge all around, be quiet, look for the links, it's always challenging yourself to explore. Starting point is technology and science, that's the technology we've been using. Um, and over time, the knowledge that we're going to build over that time will be brought back. So, 
definitions of that, but I don't know what we're doing as much as ever now, because for the last step, we still have a copy of the target or goal. In addition to that, we've got a number of online platforms that can support us with that and we've got all that data in there. So we've got those documents that don't contain the pressure I've been quite interested in the last step. We still have the information that can really support us. Survey of search platforms. Addition to that, in Maps, for example, there's been a quick slide here with a link to our Attack and Map website, and that contains all of the things that we use in Maps. We're keen to build on some of the assessment that we're seeing, so we probably could be working on some better asking for some better addresses. But I think the other thing is all of our students are very accessible via email, and it's actually really good welcome email to students because they think there's a bit of information or there's something that they haven't got they want pointing in the right direction. I think it's always good just to avoid um, general Google search if there's something that you're trying to find out because you kind of get bombarded with information. We have our school librarians sitting in the room right now, and I know Mrs. Kelly's always welcome to you know, request of that nature if they want to pick up something. Yes, it's good if they can find what they've done in, in the past, right? Um, but it's not essential that we use that to advise them. They, they can use their resources, they can, they can speak to either their subjects or they can go to some other library, or they can drop in email to us. You know, there are multiple ways that we get that information. Yes. You don't maybe have the free time to build up a lovely digital library. No, no, 100%. 100%. But actually, they'll bring them. That's right. And they'll bring them at home. And in addition to that, they'll have um, their Google, many, many of the students Google Classroom. Google Classroom is the focus of the Google Classroom that they can really connect with for the year. In addition to that, Around maybe the student data students, but there are assessment documents that can still help us make student searches. Um, so if you've got the online things, there are the, the additional ways to do searches as well. I think it's certainly in line with Google Sheets that we're looking at. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 The way that BBC is quite good about this is it's, it's, it's in the quiz we buy the test and the quote that we think that it's it can give us good start and it can it can let many subjects work quickly. Because you've got to mention somewhere on this slide about you know the Google references, but they don't really work for the Google references, do they? Um, no, well we we we, we still the use the old style, we'd have an open book and you'd get the Google Sheet We still use a lot of textbooks, so you know the maths use textbooks and things that we can kind of see for the class, but in the mix and in increasing the time we use maths is probably our and um, that's not there are we certainly there, there are some additions that we can make. Do you want to be talking about Knowledge authorised is provided with site across, and we're certainly we're potentially going to be working on our own department to work. We'll open that up. Maps, for example, is a good kind of data search for us for us to be doing some of the stuff with that. Um, but we can open the book and do the maps operation with it as well. So it's provided there. So there are also if, if there's something that we're stuck with, just let us know, and we can always point in the right direction. Either we can just say, Mr. Jim, Mr. Kelly, or Mr. Alan, we're so happy to have them, and um, we look forward. That's that's completely fine. Um, Rambam is, is something that you know um, we, we've shared with learners before, and you know, various teachers use, use as a strategy. And that's you know reading, reading intensely for a minute, and then making bullet pointed information from it, just so that you're varying the activity and you're changing it and, and moving it around. And often, that ultimately, what we're looking at here is is putting in effort and time to lead to success. These are just some elements. There's, there's obviously hundreds of elements that you can bring in multiple combinations, and it's about working. Especially if you've got a child in year seven, year eight, or year nine, and building up your strategy so they can be successful as they move through. We're just going to watch a short video now, which comes and gives a further six ideas of um, how to study effectively and answer different <coughs> methods. I just don't think the sound's on.
going to be really loud or really quiet. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll edit this bit out of the video. Completely. 
Check out the description below this video for some examples. Use specific, concrete examples. Relevant examples help demonstrate and explain ideas, which helps you to understand them better. Human memory hooks onto concrete information better than abstract information, so always look for real-life examples you can relate to. For example, scarcity is an abstract idea. You can explain it as the rarer something is, the higher its value will be. But we've used abstract terms to explain an abstract idea. Not so helpful. So we use a specific example to illustrate the idea. Think about a ticket scalper. If you purchase a ticket to a sports event at the start of the season, the ticket price is reasonable. But as the game day gets closer and the two teams are now at the top of the ladder, more people buy tickets. This scarcity drives up the cost of the tickets, and the ticket scalper charges more for the tickets. That's a concrete example of an abstract idea. You can collect examples from your teacher or professor, search your textbook or notes, and look out for examples in your daily life. Thinking of your own relevant examples is most helpful for your learning, but be careful to confirm with your teacher that your examples are accurate and relevant to the idea you're learning. Make the link between the idea and the example, and you'll understand how the example applies. Look at <coughs> verbal material with visuals. Doing this gives you two ways of understanding and remembering the information later on. Find visuals in your notes and textbook, and examine how the words are describing what's in the image. Then, do it the other way around. How does the image represent what's described by the text? Look at the visuals and explain in your own words what they mean. Then take the words from your class materials and draw your own picture for them. Try to create different ways to represent the information and start to use this strategy when you practice retrieving your knowledge later on. And just to clarify, this is not about learning styles. A great deal of research has shown that assessing your learning style and matching your study approach to that style does not improve your learning. Just because you might prefer pictures doesn't mean it's the most effective way for you to learn. You learn best when you combine words and visuals. And finally, this is the single most valuable study skill to help you boost your performance, so it's definitely worth mastering. Practice retrieving everything in your head you already know about the topic. Put away all your notes and textbooks and write down or sketch out everything you know right now. Why? Because retrieving your knowledge like this reinforces what you've learned and makes it easier to remember later on. But also, improvement comes with practice. If you want to get better at recalling information in exams, then you should practice recalling information now, just like you practice any other skill. Plus, it highlights what you don't know, and that's where you should focus your study time. Makes sense, right? So what's the best way to do this? Take as many practice tests as you possibly can, even if you have to make them up and swap with a friend. Or just start with a blank piece of paper and empty your brain. Write out everything you know, draw sketches or concept maps linking all the ideas together. Make sure you do this a while after you've learned something, so put away your notes. This is not about reciting information you've just glanced at in your textbook. Once you're finished, check what you've written against your class material. What did you get right or wrong, and what didn't you recall at all? That's perfect feedback and shows you where you need to get better. Now you know the six study strategies academic research says are the most effective, here's a simple way to recall them for your next study session. If you'd like some free downloadable posters about these six strategies to put on your wall, follow the link in the description below this video. Thanks for watching. Bye. And actually, like everything, that's just one person's opinion. Well, not one person's opinion, it's based on research, but it's just one way of looking at it. Certainly, at the retrieval mechanism, like that I personally use when I want to go back to my A levels and just being able to push everything. And you can certainly see it's a way of you work with knowledge on this. You can see how your child can use how many other things you know about cells. You can see, uh, let's use the um, science example again. Just write down everything you know about cells. Give them 10 minutes, 15 minutes, just put everything down on a bit of paper. Every little bit of information they can think about, and then sit together and look at that page. You, know, you can look at that page, then there, and just pull out. Okay, you, you've got this bit, you've got that bit, you didn't add that bit. How can we improve that? And then you can 
sits and builds their own provision machine based on the knowledge of the mind. And that's just a really nice way of working together on it. And in terms of it, I just want to go over now, um, I just want to go through the set exam QLA PIT. And, and I, I realize I've said loads of that in all sorts of things, but people just do, don't they? Um, but in terms of the process that we're now using in Cadbury and applying to each assessment week, we're being very clear at the beginning of the half term with the students, with you as parents, we as team leadership as a team and from there we both say what's what what are learning is happening in the classroom because we have those knowledge organisers. So in the first week of the half term, the curriculum for that half term is set. We're very clear that this is what we're going to be learning over the next six weeks. And the teachers go into those six weeks knowing what the assessment papers will be at the end of those six weeks. And therefore we're already going to quite soon after as well. So we're very clear about this is what we need to learn in the next six weeks. The work is set. We then have our lessons and we go through that teaching and learning um, cycle. We then get to the exam. We have the exam in the penultimate week of the half term. So the week before we break up, we have our examinations. Um, we sit those assessment positions and we then obviously the teachers then mark those. When the teachers mark in English, Math and Science initially, and then they can be rolled out to other subjects as well, they are now going to complete what we call question level analysis. This is something that teachers have been exploring since September. They've been using it throughout the school. Some subjects did it previously as well. Um, but we've now introduced a common format across school subjects. And essentially, this is the teachers entering in each and every single question and what every mark the students got. So, for example, if the, the first uh, question that papers were five marks against every single student, they would have got one out of five of those blocks, um, and we want to make sure that students do that. We then color code that, so those students who got five out of five are going to be green, those students who got three or four are going to be amber, and those students who got below three are going to be red for that individual question. And then as parents, what you will then get, and what the students will get in their books, the breakdown of each of the questions and the topic that that question was on. And we'll show you whether they're red, red, amber, or green. So then you know, as parents, what, what are they struggling with? Okay, so if they've got measures, that's green. They've got problems, yeah, we can see our school system that's right at home, but they don't understand those sorts of numbers. They don't know how to add those sorts of numbers. And our aim ultimately with problem that we're working to, for example, in math, is then to say to you, here's the resource that can help with that. Okay, so it gives you that. So that gives you that English and math video, or it gives you a worksheet, or it gives you a download, it gives you something to move on and obviously give the students that independence build up as well. So that's the next step in terms of the process. But certainly getting that information to you. In the future our intention is when we issue an assessment report, we have the grades, okay, and I'll talk about the grades and stuff in the lesson that we're looking at as well. But more importantly we have the breakdown and we can use it both initially and there's certainly some context in terms of what they got and what they didn't get. And particularly in maths and the exams that are coming up, are there marks for the working down and Okay, so yes, in, in the assessment manifest for maths, um, it states in here, um, you must ensure, yeah, so it's above that, um, so you must ensure all your steps in your working are communicated to give these questions worth more than one mark. If it's a one mark question, yes, they don't get just the answer, but if it's anything more than one mark, then there's normally marks associated with their calculation or um, you can gain any mark if you've got the wrong answer. So, yeah, that's right. So, there's, yeah. If it's more than one mark, they will always get Yes, definitely. That's right. Um, and you always get that how do you know this one that they can do. So, we go through a, a catalogue of funny ones. But, um, um, really importantly, following the process now, so we've, you know, we've done assessment weeks before, obviously, we've done some parts of these QLA. The important thing now is that we have a whole assessment approach. So, we've sit with some small subjects, uh, gone with ones constantly. We've got that ingrained and better. We're moving them into our feedback subjects and more broadly as well, moving forward. So, we have the exam, we have the question level analysis, and then critically, we have this time, which is our dedicated improvement time. And that's where we, we collapse the timetable as such. Well, we, there's still going to be a lesson that we will be going to do, but in the, in the session, Sessions are designed to target the gaps from their most recent assessment. So the 
before we move on to the next unit of work, we have dedicated time that we're seeking to address some of the joint areas, particularly the annual areas for each day. Now, if the students were agreed on everything, then we're going to push them on and give them some more time and context to move forward. It's very rare, even, you know, I, I did some work with one of our HR students the other day for science technology, she still got areas that she didn't agree on. It's very rare you're going to get students who still don't have these events and everything. In which case, it's probably evident to all the other learners and the people at the other level. So, there's always going to be things that we can work on. And for us, this, this time in our technical cycle, that dedicated improvement time is a week after half term. Um, but in future, that's going to be built into the same half term as we move that forward. Uh, so, it's a new approach that we put in place. That, and and, and it, 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 we, we will term it with the students as DIT time, dedicated improvement time. We're going to build it into everything we do. Critically, sorry. That will be, so that will be about um, obviously we have to do more rest in the week. That'll be about using a range of resources. If we, the departments will work as a team to identify learners. It may be that we pull learners from different groups to focus on uh, different areas. We have our learning kitchens that we use as well to support. We'll also use online resources and activity for the example of the student um, that's really struggling with friendship. You know, they may have a maths or something. We can set those activities to really focus on that area. So it's about using all of the any lesson we're going to do from Harvard's work to the friendship work, it's about being really specific about the friendship and actually being quite dynamic with groups as well. Being prepared to say, okay, I've got 20 here that did get that in the paper. I'm going to start a lesson with those 20, knowing full well that these five struggle with this and my learning kids are going to work with them, or I'm going to give them a video to watch. And some, some things that our teachers don't try to do are certain things that we don't have the staff to do, but you know, we will record an introduction to them for the lesson. They start by watching the video or the video lesson. We'll give that to them, they have their teacher ready to watch that and come back with questions. So it's about being really personal in that approach and making sure that, you know, really good example with our HR students at the other day, the rest of the class were working on um, reading a project report and a paper. She was asked to, to look at the examples of things that she struggled with. And sometimes it's just about giving them the resource and the time to sit and look at that and control the environment. It's not always about that. So no, it's the, because the session's not based upon struggle to edit every Saturday, it's based upon the data, and it's based upon here's, so here's my red areas. No, so it starts so from any social reading and some of the and that. Okay. No. Yeah. But that's something that we're that's something we've already really focused on in our work as as, as leaders is really focused on having that kind of thing for us. And also yeah. So the truth is, there will be times when we do further into that and we still not be able to have that. Okay, so that's okay. that's that's life. We can have that happening, and that's where the first four weeks are going to play. So we, we have our intervention program on a Wednesday afternoon. Now we have our catch up day, which is the intervention of the day. That's something that we're going to continue to refine and develop moving forward. And there'll be some more information that we put up coming out about that, and it's something. But a lot of that will come in advance of the time as well by actually having taking mystery out of it, and not knowing what's going to be out of it, just going in blind and doing your best. So actually, yes, do your best, but let's go in fully armed and knowing what's coming up ahead of us. See, because children, uh, if parents don't understand, I've noticed this, they don't understand the, the scoring system. Mm. So um, I'm, I'm right at the beginning. You yeah. can explain that to me because yeah. I asked, and, yeah. and suddenly all the parents come watching over to listen. But a lot of people do not understand. Yeah. So it. we recognise that the parent scoring system is based upon sort of age based expectations. So it should, the idea being that it reflects uh, a comparison of where they should be against their same peer and colleague level. Um, so it's used as the conversion to the national system that it gives yes, you, that which, yeah, at the end, is all the school system. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I understand it now, but I asked him to, and I think she might have got it from you. Well, well, then you've got the front of their books. No, it, so yeah, but it's. That's the missing book. It is. <laughs> 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 I'm not sure if I've got a How am I supposed to?
I don't know. I know the teacher told me they'd laugh at that. But tell me what it is. And a lot of parents are like this. They don't understand it. And that's why they're worried about when they see this. They go, why is it year five? Why yeah. year five? They're year eight. Yeah, I 100% understand I that. I understand that. So this this is this is what we call this you know if you want to look at it from this rawest point of view this is you know very you know data heavy in that respect but this is what we call our assessment matrices and it's a conversion chart so children that historically were working at say for example um, if your child was working at four B that would equate now to a six W or five A um, A W meaning working towards M meaning mostly achieved A meaning achieved and the idea was kind of place was, okay, I'm not going to take it, it's not the case, but the idea was to make it simpler, and so you would be specific to a cohort year, rather than just having you there working at level four, which sometimes would be confusing. We recognise that this system is not working at the moment for parents, and not necessarily working for the students either. So we're committed to looking at that again. I think I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation the form of the case that came in, but we're going to be launching a consultation now with parents to work out a better We've certainly got some ideas of what we can do with each of these kids. This is what I can't but say. Well, we won't teach you. Yeah, <laughs> we can't. Uh, we're on the Toby Cobb. We can't do that. No, so we're, we're going to. The, the truth is, that we're going to revise this in a little bit. We're going to have a different way of presenting it next year because it has to be really clear to the parents as to how, how I can help them. Yeah. You see, yeah. Yeah. What yeah. I don't know, yeah. I can't help them. Yeah. Yeah. What's the A, the M, the W? So the A, the M, and the W stand for, so the W stands for working towards. So if they're a year four W, they're working towards year four curriculum. If they're a year four M, they've mostly achieved the objectives of the curriculum. And a year four A is achieved the curriculum. So it's working towards, it's working towards, it's working towards mostly achieved and achieved. And you think, they've just got new timetables, they've got these codes on. The, the timetables haven't got their codes on. The timetables, the codes on the timetables didn't have codes on. They're timetables codes. <laughs> Um, and, the, and there is a key for that one on the back of the timetable. So that's they will be they will be they will be subject code and there'll be features and issues and there'll be rules that are on there. But they're not there's nothing to show what stream they are. Um they'll be set and the third year second right they'll be set one, two, and three, that'll say maths one, maths two, maths three, yeah. one. So that we if they are streams then it will be maths three, maths one, maths two, maths three, maths one. Uh, one, two, three, and three yeah. But I don't want to focus too much on this because I'm, we are committed to moving it forward and, and changing that. Okay. It's certainly something that will clear from not only your feedback, but it does make but sense of various feedback. Didn't before. No. And I, and I appreciate that. And it's, it's, a, it's a kind of, it does make sense if, if we're able to have this platform and dialogue around it, but unfortunately, and we're not able to have that. We want to be the better way to have that. Daughters, I sat down with you, yeah. and that was the only reason. But I'll tell you what, it's unbelievable. Now, all the children parents can I do that? They get fired if they do that. I can do that. But there's yeah, no we, chance. Well, we said we did, we're going to look at how we can use this moving forward and make sure that we have that information and want to do it too. Plus, you know, whether, they, whether parents come along to this or other sessions or not, we need to make sure that every parent has you know, the best way that we can to get information. So we'll launch some consultation on that. And we love your views on that and, and we'll make sure that before we go we just get your names down so that we can, you know, because next time there's additional information and we'll be sharing this so we can do a consultation with you all. Is there any other questions from the speakers about assessment or about anything? The assessments that you just said are half term, yeah. so before each half term or year term, right? That's right. Is there at the end of the year some manner of composite assessment or do you do a half term year assessment? So we work on, yes, yeah, so we work on. The circle. I'm going to say cyclical because that's, that's the wrong word. But we work on an assessment cycle that not only tests the knowledge of the first half term, the majority of the, the knowledge will be based upon the half term, but we'll also look at the prior knowledge as well. So over the year, we build up that. But each time, test is a build. 
HSC build, but we spend more time on it's that. It's a recent test, it's not a normal test. Essentially, yes, we built that bit of time. So that's all sort of like one of the tests. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because we, we have to, we have to keep it's building. Very much like um, the video you're talking about, in terms of if you leave things too long. Mm -hmm. And historically, our technicians who did leave things too long, we didn't use the work. Thank you. 